it's V from Movies Hunter. Today we're going to dive into a captivating action drama film from 2018 called Hotel Mumbai. Now this movie is based on the real life events of the 2008 terrorist attack on the Taj Hotel in Mumbai, India. The movie opens with a gripping scene in Mumbai, India on November 26, 2008. A group of young men stealthily arrive on a small inflatable raft. The city is bustling with people and cars, but these men move with purpose. Each of them carries a huge backpack and a cell phone with an airpiece, and they are led by a man known as Brother Bull. With precision and determination, they break off into pairs and enter taxis, each giving a different destination. The Victoria Terminus, the Leopold Cafe, and the Taj Mahal Palace Hotel are among their targets. Meanwhile, in a nearby village, Arjun is saying goodbye to his pregnant wife and small daughter as he leaves for work at the Taj. In his haste, he forgets one of his shoes. At the Taj, the staff is busy preparing rooms and welcoming guests from all over the world. One such guest is Zara, an Iranian-British heiress. Her husband, who is American, is named David and they also have their infant son Cameron and his nanny. The kitchen is a hive of activity and head chef Himant is keeping a watchful eye on the wait staff. As he inspects the workers, Himant notices Arjun in sandals and tries to send him home. But after some convincing, he sends him upstairs to get an extra pair of shoes from his office. Meanwhile, on the TV monitor, a breaking news bulletin plays about an attack at the Victoria Terminus. Little does anyone know that the chaos is just beginning. Two terrorists hijack a police car and continue their spree. Zara and David sat in the hotel's restaurant, enjoying a much-needed dinner together. Upstairs, Sally was taking care of Cameron, who was feeling a bit under the weather. Little did they know, chaos was about to ensue. Hermont had instructed the staff to treat the couple and another guest, Vasily, like royalty. Meanwhile, Vasily made a special request for a rare cognac, which the waiter Sanjay promptly went out to purchase. However, on his way back, Sanjay had a near-death experience when he almost got hit by a taxi carrying two terrorists. He exchanged words with the driver, not realizing the danger he was in. At the Leopold Cafe, Eddie and Bree were enjoying a casual meal when they noticed the commotion outside. They paid their bill and headed towards the Taj, not knowing the horror that awaited them. Suddenly, shots rang out and a grenade was thrown into the cafe. Eddie and Bree managed to escape, but the same could not be said for everyone else. As the news of the attacks began to spread, the staff at the hotel grew increasingly worried. They tried to remain calm for the guests, but it was becoming increasingly difficult. Eventually, a group of people ran to the Taj, begging for sanctuary. The hotel manager, Dilep, opened the doors and they flooded inside. However, little did they know, among the group were four of the terrorists. Imran, Abdullah, Kusam, and Rashid immediately pulled out their guns and began to shoot everyone in sight. The chaos was indescribable and Brie and Eddie were separated during this chaos. Brie, unfortunately, appeared to be killed as she made a run for the exit. In the midst of chaos and terror, Arjun shows incredible bravery as he takes charge of the situation. Witnessing everything from the restaurant, he quickly orders the guests to hide under the tables while telling the staff to switch off the lights and lock the doors. His quick thinking saves many lives as the attackers storm the hotel. Meanwhile, David frantically tries to reach Sally, but to no avail. She is in the shower and doesn't hear the phone ringing. Two receptionists hiding under the desk manage to call the police and warn some guests to stay in the rooms, but it seems like a hopeless situation. The situation gets even more intense as Brother Bull orders his men to start phase two, which involves executing anyone in sight. The fear and panic are palpable as guests and staff try to hide and protect themselves. Sally finally answers David's call just as there's a knocking at the door. He warns her about the attackers and soon after, a blooded woman runs into the room followed by gunshots. Sally quickly hides in the bathroom closet with Cameron while the woman hides in the bathroom. The two men enter a suite and kill the woman, leaving Sally and Cameron desperate to stay hidden and quiet. While the attackers still in the loose, Sally is overcome with fear and desperation and she calls Zara for help. Meanwhile, David decides to take matters into his own hands and sneaks upstairs to reach Sally and Cameron. He hides in the elevator behind a room service cart, narrowly avoiding the terrorists. Finally, he makes it to the room, much to the relief of Sally and Cameron. The danger is far from over. Eddie jumps from the second floor window and injures himself. As he is carried away, he begs for someone to save Bree, who is still trapped inside. 
Outside the hotel, the attacks continue relentlessly, and the local police are unprepared to handle such an immense threat. The police chief and a few officers bravely decide to enter the hotel, despite the overwhelming odds against them. Their mission is to reach the CCTV room and track the movements of the terrorists. Now, as the situation grows more dire, this chef right here takes charge and devises a plan to move the guests to safety. Despite the risk, the kitchen staff chooses to stay behind and help, demonstrating their deep loyalty to the Taj. Arjun skillfully leads the guests through the hidden service hallway to the chamber's lounge where they hope to find refugee. Meanwhile, the police group bravely enters the hotel through the main lobby, but their efforts are met with deadly force as a terrorist throws a grenade, killing several officers and injuring another. David, Sally, and Cameron, who had been hiding in the room, cautiously make their way towards the lounge. Back downstairs, the terrorists become increasingly violent and aggressive, resorting to extreme measures to gain control. When two receptionists refuse to call the guests in the rooms, the terrorists shoot them without hesitation. Inside the lounge, tensions run high as fear and uncertainty grip the guests. One woman accuses Zara of being a terrorist simply because she is speaking Arabic to her mother on the phone. Vasily stands up for Zara and tells the woman to back off. Later on, the same woman makes a rude comment about Arjun's turban and beard, but instead of getting angry, Arjun responds with grace and patience. He explains that his turban represents his courage, but offers to take it off if it bothers her. In the end, the woman apologizes for her insensitive remark. As the stewardess enters the lounge with more guests, one of them catches Arjun's attention, Bree, who is severely wounded. Arjun knows she needs immediate medical attention, so he offers to help bring her outside through the back stairway. He uses his pagri to try and stop the bleeding, but their escape is interrupted by two policemen on the stairwell. In the chaos, Bree runs through a door and is tragically killed by Imran, who has been ordered by Brother Bull to gather hostages, especially those who look important. David and Sally find themselves facing Imran on the sixth floor. David quickly shoves Sally and Cameron into a utility closet before he is taken hostage. Trapped and with no way out, Sally's phone is dead and she has no choice but to wait and hope for rescue. Arden leads the police into the CCTV room and is shocked to find many of his employees, including his friend Sanjay, dead. Abdullah tries to gain access to the lounge by using one of the dead officer's badges, but just as the chef is about to open the door, Arjun calls and warns him. Abdullah starts shooting at the door, but the guests and staff are quickly ushered into a back room. The police order Arjun to stay put and attack the terrorists, and they manage to wound Imran before being driven off. Upstairs to David and the other hostages, Imran surprises everyone by making a tearful phone call to his father, expressing his love for him. Meanwhile, after six hours of being trapped, Zara decides to take matters into her own hands and leave the lounge with Vasily and a few other guests despite the chef's warning. Tragically, as they enter the lobby, the guests are killed and Vasily and Zara are taken hostage. Morning arrives and special forces begin to arrive in the scene. As Abdullah searches through Vasily's pockets, he discovers that he is a cool, operative something something in the past, adding another layer of danger and intrigue to the already tense situation. In the heat of the action, tensions run high as the two terrorists who hijack the police car are finally caught. But victory is bittersweet as one of the terrorists is killed while the other is taken into custody. While the clock is ticking, Brother Bull orders the group to begin their final phase, which is to burn down the hotel. It's a chilling command that threatens the lives of everyone inside. Meanwhile, Imran is left to guard the hostages, and David senses an opportunity to make a move. Despite his best efforts, he is shot in the shoulder, leaving him wounded and helpless. But amidst the chaos, a glimmer of hope emerges as Arjun decides to leave the CCTV to help more guests get to the lounge. As the situation escalates, one of the guests hears Cameron crying and takes matter into their own hands, letting Sally out of the closet. It's a small act of heroism that proves even in the face of danger, humanity can prevail. But the group's escape plan is foiled when a guest on the phone with a reporter reveals their location, and the news is broadcasted on TV for all to see. Pretty dumb. Brother Bull warns the terrorists that the guests are escaping, and in a desperate bid to maintain control, Imran is told to execute the hostages. The tension in the air is palpable as Imran takes aim and fires at an American couple, David and Vasily, who try to fight back. The senseless violence is too much to bear, and Zara begins to recite Salah, a Muslim prayer, tears streaming down her face. In a surprising turn of events, Imran is unable to shoot another Muslim and spares Zara. 
It's a moment of mercy that provides a glimmer of hope in an otherwise hopeless situation. The terrorists break down the lounge doors and start shooting guests and staff as they chase them through the stairwell. The fear in everyone's eyes is palpable as they try to escape the wrath of these merciless killers. As the terrorists reach the kitchen, special forces finally enter the hotel and engage in a fierce gunfight. Ardun, who had been trying to save his guests, finally gets to embrace this chef, with tears of joy streaming down his face as their nightmare scenario comes to an end. Meanwhile upstairs, Zara manages to find Sally who is hiding in a closet and breaks the window to scream for help. The terrorists are eventually cornered and killed. Zara is evacuated and finally reunited with Sally and Cameron. Arjun, on the other hand, returns home to his own family, grateful to have made it out alive. The closing text reveals that after three days, the police caught and killed 11 of the 12 terrorists. The mastermind of the plan, however, remains at large to this day. The film honors the memory of the 31 people who lost their lives in the attack, half of whom were staff that stayed behind to help the guests. On December 21st, 2008, the Taj was reopened and with the help of this chef, restored to its former glory. And so this was the story of Hotel Mumbai. See you in the next hunt.